Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Check it out. It's the new Mavic 2 Pro and today we're doing a range test. If you haven't caught the flight test and unboxing, I'll have the links down in the description of those. Earlier today, um, I did the main flight test over there and pretty cool. Tested out the active track through trees and it did pretty well. So check out that full on in-depth flight test. That was a really long one, probably around an hour. <laughs> but I mean, that went through pretty much everything you needed to know if you're looking at buying one of these and want to know how it performs in a flight test. But today's all about the range test. So let's boot this thing up, see how far out we can get. I'm just at the park, kind of the same time and the same conditions I did the um, Autel Evo. And with the Evo, I got 3.5 miles out. So we're gonna see with no glitches whatsoever in the FPV. So we're gonna see how far the Mavic 2 Pro gets in a range test. Let's do it. Anyway, um, we're gonna be recording this flight in 4K 30 frames per second. So starting recording, we're gonna launch right away. Uh, I think what I might do is turn the sensors off real quick. So everything is off as far as obstacle avoidance, all red. Let's go ahead and launch. And here we go, we're still recording. And we're just gonna go up and out immediately. And we're just in, wanna be in position hold mode, not sport. So here we go, straight out, straight out that way. So I don't want to make, uh, bring it too far down, but we are in an urban area where I'm standing, but we're going to get out past the urban area. So it'll be kind of clear. So I want to make sure I'm kind of holding my controller. So the antennas are pointing directly out at the drone. And so we do have some headwind and I want to say about five to 10. So it should be cool on the way back. I'm just going to kind of come back like right when it tells me to um, with DJI's smart return home. Since this is kind of the first range test, I don't really want to push it too, too hard in this light urban area. But you can see we're going at like 32, 31 miles per hour with all vision off. And I'm doing the same exact route that I did with the Autel Evo again. Same thing. I'm just gonna go straight out. And if you remember correctly, I did keep the Autel Evo pretty low and I got no problems all the way out there, three and a half miles. Not even a glitch in the FPV. So we're gonna see how this one does in comparison. I'm recording the iPad for you so you guys can see this and also the 4K on the drone. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, flip the camera down so you guys can kind of see the quality of this 4K. My right C button should be, oh nope, that's the auxiliary lights. That's the auxiliary lights on the bottom, excuse me, on my right trigger. So those um, underneath lights, I can turn them off and on with the right bottom button and the left button should actually be my autofocus. That's interesting how it's not auto-focusing. Go ahead and click the center of the screen there. Um, what I noticed is I was a little bit underwhelmed. Uh, well, look at this, look at this camera, or this canyon here. That should be pretty nice. Let me just fly over here, then I'll continue on what I was talking about. Look at that, nice. Let's just get that right down there in that nook. You can see that. Just slowly pitching the camera down. There's the old pineapple fields there from way back. And then sugarcane fields next to them as well. Okay, anyway, what I was saying was um, after the flight test today, of course I can't see the main video during the flight test, the 4K video, and I just got home. Um, that video will have been up on my channel by now, but uh, I still have to edit it today when I'm talking to you. Um, I was a little underwhelmed at the clarity of the camera. This is a one inch sensor 4K Hasselblad camera. And I felt like I was looking at, when I was looking at the 4K 30 frames per, per second footage. I was almost felt like I was looking at uh, a Mavic Air or even less because for some reason, the, um, the green vegetation is still kind of blurred and around the edges of the video were kind of blurred so i'll let you guys kind of be the judge of my last flight test and also this flight test it is pretty green here in areas i'm in hawaii and it gets pretty green um 
so I'll let you guys be the judge of that but I was kind of under impressed by this camera so maybe they're gonna need to do some updates to really make this thing perform as good as it possibly can anyway so far so good no glitches in the FPV at all yet and I do have the antenna just pointed straight out there um, cool thing about this camera is remember the Parrot Anafi can pitch up look at this you can pitch up of course not as far of course I'm going pretty fast now so the drone is pitching down it doesn't go let me go too high but you can actually pitch this camera up and it won't um, show the propellers in view as far up as you want to pitch it or anything so um, pretty pretty impressed there so let's see how far we are we are 11,000 Wow, we're, on, we're two miles now. A mile is like 5,000, a little over 5,000 feet, so we are two miles. Keep in mind I went 3.5 with the Evo. And we are having a little bit of headwind. We're at 76% power, 75 on the drone. Almost wondering if I should bring it down a bit. I think I'm gonna come down to a little bit lower. Now this footage it's showing is pertaining to my um, its launch altitude, the altitude where I'm standing, so that's not how high it is from the ground. The mountain is sloping down here. So it looks like I'm a couple hundred feet from the ground as far as where it is currently. If you look on the left of the screen, the bottom, I can see the compass and I can maintain my controller. You see I'm turning it to the left so I can maintain the drone right in front of me so I can get the best signal. So it looks like we're almost going to need to return to home. You see how that top scale there, it's saying 15 minutes flight time remaining. Just about there, that's three miles. I might push it just a little further, you know, just to say we went further. I'm gonna cancel out of this return to home, riskily doing that. But honestly, guys, I'm still in control of the gimbal. Look at the gimbal. Still in full control. Whoa, that's weird. Home position, look at that. It just went down. It's like changing up there a little bit. That's kind of strange. So it looks like it gave me more flight time to my home position. Maybe it's, t it's uh, changing in account of the wind, possibly. So maybe I'll go to 20. Are we going to make 20? <laughs> I don't know. Let's see what we can do here. I want to push it too far and not be able to come home. Oh, okay, yeah, we should probably turn around. It just hit some wind gusts, and it does look like it's adjusting. So no glitches in video at all. Video is still very clear. I'm going to go ahead and hit uh, return to home now. So hitting return to home there. And let's just go to 19,000 feet, right there. And then we're gonna go stop and return to home. So there we go, so it's gonna go up, and then it's going to start returning to home. There we go. Well, that's interesting. It turned around, okay, it turned around first. Now it's gonna climb in altitude. Of course, we are wasting some battery power doing that, but check it out, our home point changed on that bar up there, so it looks like we're gonna be okay, because it's kind of changing for how the wind is acting. All right, now it's gonna try to come home. So we went 19,000 feet. Uh, I'll have that pop up as far as our maximum range went, and we didn't even have one glitch in the system. So very comparable to, I mean, this is the OcuSync 2.0, remember? So comparable, if not better, than the Autel Evo connection. But the Autel Evo connection, um, it's their own proprietary, which is, I think it's, it kind of rivals this. It's very similar. And that, that um, technology is pretty amazing as well. So we're coming with the wind now, so we're coming on back. And uh, let's just check out our map real quick. It says we do have 18 minutes of flight time remaining, so we should be fine. 
no problem whatsoever it's coming back in a straight line there we are there's our complete route in white and just doing fantastic you can see that home fluctuating though that's interesting on the very top I saw the home kind of go to the right side of the time and then back to the left you see what it's doing right now so kind of weird maybe the wind is kind of really variable over there I'm not too sure uh, but it is a little bit scary we are going 26 miles per hour I'm just gonna kind of let it go as fast as it needs so yeah so a little bit scary because that home position is way off to the right of the time if you look up there so it does it does seem a little bit scary um, but 19,000 so that's over three and a half miles that's gonna be almost four miles that's probably three I want to say three and a quarter miles but again I will have that total mileage up on the screen for you guys to see and then keep in mind that we are recording in 4k and you can kind of be the judge of how this looks again I was a little bit underwhelmed underwhelmed from my um, flight test today didn't seem like it was as good as it could be considering it's a one inch sensor and this Hasselblad um, again I was like almost more impressed with the Mavic Air camera but you know maybe they need to do some software updates and we'll be okay so we should be okay so the smart return to home I think that's a little off because since we're coming with the wind we shouldn't really have to worry about the battery power it would be cool if it kind of adjusted a little better to um, noticing how the wind if it's coming from the back or the front and adjust its return to home it seemed like that's what it was doing when I was going out didn't it it was going way far over maybe in a wind gust and then it would come back um, but anyway sorry about the beeping that's just the return to home beep I'm just gonna leave it in return to home I do wish there was a way to stop that return to home but or that beeping but I uh, I could always exit return to home and just come straight forward but I really just want to get a feel for this thing you know how accurate it is returning to home you can see the line we left in is just it's just going right on the side of it um, so it's it's pretty much the same route I think I turned a little bit to the left as I was heading out so that's why it's not right on top of it Yeah, I think we're going to be a-okay. Uh, we got 49% power still left, and um, we're at 9,000 feet. So we've already gone just about 10,000 feet, so we're okay. No problem whatsoever. So... Anyway, there's another picture of the ground and the grass. I'm focusing on it. Let you guys kind of see uh, what that looks like. Let me tilt the camera all the way down. And you guys can see that. So really, as far as the FPV, just about the same as the Evo. Extremely similar as in the clarity and also the connection. So for those of you that were wary about this connection being as good as the Evo, it definitely is in this area. Again, this is again the same area that I did the uh, Evo test, same place and about the same time of day too in the same conditions. So really good example in comparison. I think we're doing me just fine. The home point has now gone to the left of the timer up there and there is that valley again just beautiful here let's see if we can spot any sheep or goats or cattle nope don't see any in there maybe you guys do in the high def okay just got another mile to go just about a little over a mile going over the pukulani golf courses again recording in 4k on the phantom pro I'm sorry, Mavic Pro 2. 
So this is how it's shooting at uh, the evening. The sun is kind of to the left of it. Maybe we'll get some sunset footage because it looks like we're gonna we're gonna get home and have plenty of power left. At um three and three quarters of a mile. Three yeah, three point seven five, I believe. Is as far as we went, so that's the total tra total distance traveled is gonna be seven and a half miles about. So very similar, but if you remember correctly, the Evo, man, I barely got back going three and a half miles in these same conditions. Uh, so definitely this is gonna have more flight time. We'll see exactly when it comes back, but we're almost home, look at this. 3,000 more feet to go. And we still got 39% power, so we could have pushed this a lot more, a lot further, if we wanted to. And of course, I'm just adjusting with the right roller, um, the shutter exposure a little bit, just to hopefully get it in its premium quality lighting there. Okay, we're almost home guys. Coming in at 162 feet high. That's its return to home altitude. And we got 37% left. You know what we'll do is, gosh, what I wanna do, I do wanna see it return to home. So what I'll do is I'll let it return to home. Then I wanna launch again and try to get another time lapse. It's pretty cool with this, getting some time lapse of the clouds. Um, that's a pretty neat new feature it has. So we'll try some time lapse. Let's see how it looks. So we're home. We are home. Let's pitch the camera down. There I am right there, hello. Exposure again is a little washed out. I don't know, the grass just doesn't look super clear to me with this camera. Looks like it could be a lot clearer, but it's just not that clear even when I focus in on it. Anyway, this is how it's working though. Um, let's try these lights. So if I push the right trigger. Nope. That's interesting. I guess on landing, the you can only turn on the lights automatically if it needs them or not. Oh, there we go. You see them turn on? That light on the bottom. So I just click the right trigger. I click it again. Turned off. Oh, now it's not coming on. Oh, there we go. Clicked on again. Kind of interesting. So it was gonna land right there on the, whoa. Let's go back up, that's interesting. It's landing fast this time. Was gonna be about a foot off. Anyway, there we go. Look, there's some birds up there in the sky. <laughs> cool focus in. So the left trigger is supposed to be the autofocus. For some reason it seemed like the, the triggers weren't really um, acknowledging the clicking when I was doing it this time. That's a little bit strange. Anyway, I want to get up here and let's do some time lapse of the cloud. So I'm going to launch again just in manual mode by pushing the sticks down and in. And we'll get up. Okay, I'm going to turn off the recording. And we're just gonna get some cool uh, footage of these clouds, just like that, right there. I'm gonna go into the time-lapse mode, boom. Okay, it wants me to enable the forward obstacle sensing, apparently. And enable downward vision. Yeah, whatever, just turn it on, <laughs> okay. So we'll just do um, free time-lapse, okay? And our video length, let's try to do, oh, see, so you only can do it according to what the battery says. So let's do nine seconds and go. Okay, so what it's doing is it's taking a picture every two seconds. I think, it should be. Yeah, so you see on the bottom right, it's got how many pictures it t took out of 225. So it's gonna try to take 225 pictures and that should basically be um, 
until the battery is just about to die. So this would be kind of cool. Basically, we'll see the clouds uh, kind of, you know, in time lapse with this sunset here. Would have been cool if it was a little bit later so you could see that sun really setting. But anyway, that's also how this thing's dealing with the sun directly at it. So probably in these kinds of situations where the sun is directly in front of it, this is what that one inch sensor and the quality of camera is really going to be good at. Um, you know, staying lit and keeping everything nice and clear and clean, even though the sun is directly at it. So we'll see how this thing does. We still have quite a bit more. Um, it looks like somebody's at my front door. I guess that's going to be hopefully family. I'll check my phone and see who that is. So I'm just going to let this run and do its pictures until I guess the battery dies and it has to land. And then I'll have that time lapse up on the screen. Okay, yep. That was just my uh, wife coming home. <laughs> so, false alarm, no problem. So it's interesting how it wanted me to turn on the sensors when I was doing the time lapse. So it's, it's right now it's having forward and rear obstacle avoidance if needed. I guess I could have said no, cancel, if I didn't want to turn those sensors on. But it did ask me if I wanted to turn those on while doing this, which was kind of interesting. So I'm wondering if maybe I should have focused in a little bit on the clouds. Looks okay. Looks maybe like the distant focus is the best. So we just went into a low, I basically bring down all the battery warnings to the minimum they could be. So it's giving us a warning at 15%. And uh, since we just launched right from the launch point, just gonna really just basically let it run out of power and then land when it wants to. Okay, so it's gonna wanna land now. So it just exited hyperlapse. Oh, and I really hope it's, save, it's saving that. Okay. It's going slower now, and it's right in its landing vicinity. So what we'll do now is we'll just bring it on down. So I'm just gonna slide to land, and then I wanna position it, pull it back a little bit, just so I can manually get it where I want. Again, a little bit disappointed. This one doesn't have precision landing, like the Mavic Pro and the Mavic Air. So get it where we want and then we'll press slide to land and we can still adjust it a little bit. So we hit our target. So that was one of the cons I had in my, uh, my flight test. Anyway, I wanna see that time lapse real quick. Wow, only five seconds and it took that long to get that time lapse. So let's check it out. It's gonna download it to my iPad. So I'm just gonna play it for you guys over this recording. And then I'll also play it on the screen. So here we go, let's press play for that time-lapse we just got, boom. Nice, look at that. So we can get some cool time-lapse shots like that. So I also have it up in its full um, resolution on the screen right now, so you guys can check that out. Cool, so I think that's it. There's the range test, guys, of the Mavic 2 Pro. Uh, pretty awesome drone, a couple of cons with it so far, and um, let me just turn this off because we're already pretty low. Uh, this is the third battery charge on this thing. You usually get the best performance out of like 10 cycles, so maybe we could push it a little more once we get up to 10 cycles and go further. But you could see um, when I got back, I was like over 30% power left. So they claim this thing can go five miles, I think. Eight kilometers, is that five miles, I believe? So I'd imagine if you ignored the return to home and you had no wind whatsoever, I had some wind kind of coming at me. So if you just basically ignored that and went out, you could maybe just get that distance on the battery, but no glitch whatsoever on the three and three quarters of a mile range we got today. So I hope you enjoyed that, guys. If you are pleased with this thing, um, Go ahead and check out the links. I'll have them in the description so you can get your own. I will also be reviewing the Mavic 2 Zoom. So um, if you don't need this Hasselblad camera, this one inch sensor, go ahead and check the Mavic Zoom out. That's actually a little bit cheaper and uh, 
you'll basically be able to zoom in like I think it's two two times zoom two times optical and then it adds a couple of digital decide for yourself how you think the quality of this camera is I'm a little bit underwhelmed for it and uh, maybe you guys are too but otherwise pretty cool drone I'm liking it a lot thanks for tuning in and don't forget we're gonna do some maybe another range test up in the mountain in the pure country so we don't have this interference here but you know what maybe we don't even have to do that kind of like the evo because there was really no interference as far as i could see on the ocusync 2 on the fpv uh, so if anything like i was thinking that is how this thing really improved is the transmission signal got a lot stronger and better with the ocusync 2 with the ocusync 1 the, on the Mavic Pro, that far out you would notice a little bit of glitching in the screen, but honest to gosh, um, no glitching whatsoever all the way at three and three quarters miles out. So, anyways, thanks for tuning in, guys, and vid lots of videos to come. We got the Ma Mavic Zoom, and we got some cinematic with ocean and shorelines with these awesome drones. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.